God gave us a birthright. We have been born and birthed into this world as sons and daughters only to know that in due time you and I will die because this body will die because there is a time limit on this body of flesh. It is corruptible. It is mortal. But God has a plan to change all that and it starts with the birthright to be born again. When you are born again, you can see the kingdom of God. And when you are born of water and of the Spirit, then you can enter into the kingdom of God. So don't just see from the outside, but to be able to enter. Give it all unto Jesus. As I stand here and look at all of you, behold, you are so beautiful. Tell your neighbor, you look so wonderful this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Blessed are the people who have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> so, we have come to the Lord because of His amazing grace. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. That saved each one of us from all our circumstances, whatever lifestyle it may have been, now we are found in the house of the Lord. And indeed, it has been a wonderful journey because the Lord imparts His abundant grace upon us. It is grace upon grace. And so in our journey, it is for you and I to discover more of God's grace that will help us to know Him more, to love Him more, and to serve Him more. And everybody say, Amen. Amen, Amen. This morning, I would like to share with regard to uniquely you. Some time back, we did this, uh, or we were taught with regard to DISC, which is a temperament or personality analysis, DISC. And it is a discovery of ourselves, who we are. The way God made us align us and help us to, to be who we are in the Lord. And time and again, we find people having challenges with their personal identity. Whether they are teenagers, and then we find there are people who are in midlife crisis, and then after those who have journeyed later on in years. By the way, just now introducing, and then I say, how many are senior citizens here? You are the golden citizens, amen? Yeah. I, I refuse to accept the position that, that I was given as a senior pastor until I reached 60. Then I came to terms, okay, at least I can be a senior pastor at 60. Okay, and so that, that, that took uh, a little effort to reach 60. So all of you who have reached 60, praise the Lord. God bless you and continue on in the years and the decades because the word, word of the Lord says you will still be fruitful in old age. Amen. Hallelujah. So do not disqualify yourself. Do not look down upon yourself. Do not let others say, hey, old already, la. what can you do, man? Okay, but you can do a lot of things. And all the seniors say, hey, amen, amen, amen. I'm glad your pastor has already gone to the seventh series already before us. We will reach our seventh series only next year, okay? My wife will reach first two months' time. <laughs> So she goes before me, yeah. And so she says sometimes she is the kaka, so she can tell me what to do. Although I have a uh, little stubborn ears sometimes. Men have uh, the ears that uh, sometimes selective listening. All the men say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do you know the gospel? In the gospels, the Lord say, he who have ears to hear, let him hear. But then when you go down to the book of Revelation, the Lord says, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. So from two ears to hear the gospel, right down to Revelation, 
that ear to hear what the Lord says in His words of prophecy, in the words that the Lord wants to reveal to His people. And so it's important for us, for our hearts, the ears of our spirit to be able to pick up what the Lord is saying, especially in the end times. Although when we started in our journey, for many of us, for me, it's, I started my journey in the Lord in the 70s, mid-70s. That's why your pastor said, okay, Woodstock and all that. Mid-70s, uh, that was earlier on. Woodstock is earlier on. But that time we were already hearing messages about the second coming, second coming of the Lord. And then year after year, decade after decade passed on. The Lord tarries because He is still waiting. And God has been very patient. And He wants you and I to learn to be patient, to wait upon the Lord. And so through the psalmist, He speaks, even though He had all the many challenges, David had all the many challenges that he faced in his life's journey. And at the end of the psalm, he says, hope in Him, wait upon Him. So this morning, let us look to the Lord as we wait upon Him and allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. I would just like to read from this passage of Scripture, Romans 8, that says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. They are the huios of God. That means they have come of age. They have come to the age of maturity, of responsibility. And so when the Father said, You are my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, speaking to the Lord Jesus, and Jesus at that time was 30 years of age. And so for the many who are still below 30, let me see your hand, those who are below 30. Okay, so you still have growing up to do. There are still years of maturing. Maturing you and God wants to do that. He allows you to go through all kinds of circumstances to build you up in the most holy faith. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children, the technon of God. We are children, still growing up. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing or the manifestation or the apocalypsis of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to fertility, not willingly, but because of Him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So this morning, recognizing God made us unique. Each one of us are different. And so for those of you who are parents, as you raise up your children, do, re, mi, fa, so, okay, since coming to Klang, I find that, wow, many families, uh, they have about a dozen one, you know. <laughs> Nowadays, uh, it's only one or two, okay. Uh, in time past, the parents uh, of old, they, they really multiply and were fruitful. Someone was telling me, yeah, they come from a family of 19 siblings. This is in Klang. <laughs> So, each one different, a different makeup, a different personality, although we try to follow the one who is better, or you get scolding, why are you not like your brother? Why are you not like your sister? Why are you not like your cousin? And so pressure for you to perform, to be like another one seemingly who would look better, who would uh, earn better, who would have a better prestige. And so we struggle and children do struggle in our present time as well, growing up. And in the counselling ministry, you find nowadays, uh, young children already send them to see professionals. I mean, we are living at such a time. 
preschool already sent to see professionals because they have temperamental issues, they have psychological, physiological issues, and so they need to see professionals to help them realign or heal or to receive something that will help them in their journey. And it takes a lot out of the parents to have someone called a special child. But this morning, let it be known, God looks upon all of us. We are special in His eyes. Amen? We are special in His eyes. And so the love of God is poured over our lives so that when the love of God is poured into your vessel, into your heart, then the love of God begins to bring changes in your life and help you to come to terms with acceptance of yourself. Now, this portion of Scripture talks a bit, talk a bit uh, anyway, before that, let me uh, put certain things clear. We are all sons and daughters of God, amen? And that's why we are here. That is our identity, our gender become the first thing the moment a child is born. Is it a male child or a female child? a son or a daughter. And so we are given that identity. A son is born. And so coming Christmas, yeah, for unto us a child, a son is given. Uh, and so Jesus became the son of man. The son of God becoming the son of man. And all of the sons here, daughters here, God has given you as a precious gift to your parents. Amen. And so, be able to recognize this is my first identity. I am a son. I am a daughter. And because for many years, learning ABC, I did not know something as a Chinese, then I begin to discover for those who are Chinese, and if for all as well, those who know Mandarin. How many knows Mandarin? Okay. How do you write a girl child? When you put it together, what does that mean? A girl, child, put it together. A girl and a child, you put it together, it is good. And that's what Genesis says in the beginning. God created one day, second day, third day, fourth day. Good, 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 good. And at the end, very good. So all the ladies here, all the girl, child, you are good. And all the men say... Yeah, okay, you better say yeah, amen, okay. <laughs> and the other word for male, male is written with a land, a garden. And outside of it is the strength. So for a male child, the Chinese character put there, it means you are laboring on the field. And that's what it is. After Adam and Eve sinned against God, as children of disobedience, they were driven out of the Garden of Eden. And there you will toil. You're with sweat and tears, it brings forth thorns and thistles by the sweat of your brow. And so all the men are laborers. And all the women say, <laughs> I'll be getting into trouble with some of the men here. Okay, okay. <laughs> and so when you get into, the ma into marriage, uh, marriage is a workshop. The man works and the women shop, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> So we get back to uniquely you as sons and daughters. Do you know that Adam was known as the son of God according to Luke's gospel? In the genealogy of Christ, uh, talking about Jesus and then seemingly son of Joseph and it goes down, it goes back, it traces back and then to Adam, the son of God. Adam was created very unique, very special, made in the image and the likeness of God. And he could rule over all the things that were in the air, in the sea, and on land. He was an incredible person, created and made. But then, in due time, he fell. 
He fell into sin, into disobedience. He disobeyed God by eating or partaking of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which the Lord said, you shall not eat from it, lest you die. So that was the first son of God, Adam, and he fell. Then later on in Genesis chapter 6, we see uh, there's a passage about the sons of God. And these sons of God saw the daughters of men. They were beautiful. Daughters, you are beautiful. Amen. You are beautiful. Whatever shape and size, okay, you are beautiful. Whether you have makeup, no makeup, you are beautiful. So the sons of God saw the daughters of men, they were beautiful, and they took them as wives, whomever they choose, and they bore children. And this became the mighty man of old, the Nephilim. But these are the sons of disobedience. Sons of God, they were probably the angels who had fallen. Angels became fallen angels. Adam became a fallen being. And so God's plan was to bring about a restoration so that fallen man can be restored. But angels, when they have made the choice and the decision in time past, they, that is already determined whether they are the angels on the good side or the angels on the bad side. And the time will come for them to receive their judgment. But for the sons of men, God had a wonderful plan to redeem, to save, and to bring us back to that place where we can honour our God, our Creator, and our Maker. And so by how do we get into that place? God gave us a birthright. We have been born and birthed into this world as sons and daughters only to know that in due time, you and I will die because this body will die because there is a time limit on this body of flesh. It is corruptible. It is mortal. But God has a plan to change all that. And it starts with that birthright to be born again. When you are born again, you can see the kingdom of God. And when you are born of water and of the Spirit, then you can enter into the kingdom of God. So don't just see from the outside, but to be able to enter and to come to the time where the kingdom of God is in you. It is found in you because things have already, the dynamics are already at work. You have been growing, growing in the word, growing in prayer, growing in faith. The mustard seed that has been sown and planted and put upon your heart, you have allowed it to grow. Whether it is hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, or according to Mark, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, hundredfold. God's desire is for you to have hundredfold fruitfulness. And so be a fruitful believer. Be a fruitful child of God. Let that potential be fully realized. So as many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become sons of God, the huyos of God, to those who would believe in His name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So that is the birthright. But we know in Scripture, somebody sold his birthright. You know the person, isn't it? Esau served, sold his birthright to his brother Jacob. He did not know the value. He did not appreciate the value of that birthright. And because of a meal, because he was hungry, because he smelled what his brother was cooking, he said, give me that Ang Tao Chuya, is it? Lentils, okay. And he sold his birthright. And at the end, when he wanted to get it back, he was crying and weeping because he lost it. So beloved, you have a birthright. Don't ever sell or give up your birthright. Can you tell your neighbor, 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 don't you ever give up your birthright. Because the enemy will try. He will put pressure. 
And that pressure could cause us to come to a place where we could give up our birthright. Secondly, uh, the scripture that talks about you have been given the spirit of adoption. Adoption is a godly word. It is a good word. Adoption. It is a gracious word. It comes from the heart of the Father, of God. And this morning, should there be any of you who have been adopted? Or some of you who are struggling with your identity. Am I adopted? I have asked dad, I have asked mom. They say, no, 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 okay. But sometimes we find there are people who, who dare not tell the child you have been adopted. Because they are afraid that they may change their mind that they may go and look for their real parents. And so we have seen many in that journey, parents who want to adopt and they say, this is, this is not from the womb, this is from the heart. We love you, we accept you, we receive you into the family as our own and we have raised you up. But sometimes parents are fearful of telling them the truth. And what did Jesus say? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So be free from deceptions. Be free from things that would bring com contradictions, confusion and come to a place to recognize the truth of God's written word. Free from, you know, wherever we go, we will still find people not outside but in the church still have a number of issues, fears, worries, anxieties, addiction, addictive behaviours. So there are still members in the church who go through constant vicious cycle, repeated again and again. And we pray this morning, you will come to a place and say, Lord, let me know the truth of your word. Because you have said, fear not. You have said, do not worry. You have said in your word, and it is for me. I want to be free from these conflicts that keeps affecting my mind. And I have lost sleep. I have lost focus. I have lost weight. Okay, I still maintain this weight. Okay, people say sometimes once in a while, hey, pastor, you're growing thin. Now. No, I'm gaining gram by gram. Okay, <laughs> while you gain kilo by kilo. I, I just do it gram by gram. I just go on a slow pace. You want to join me? Okay, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is to prepare me for rapture so I go faster. Up. Okay, so the truth of God's word will help us to be liberated. Whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. So do not continue with those things and allow these baggages, these bondages to be weighed down upon your life, upon your journey that affects you in your relationship, that affects you in your career, that affects you in your studies, that affects you in your ministry. In ministry, we can still struggle. Sometimes there is that fear of competition and so we become possessive. We want to hold on as much as we can. But... Just now we were singing, give it, give it, give it, give unto the Lord. Freely receive, freely give. Hallelujah. That rich young man who came to the Lord and said, I've, what, 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 sh what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The Lord says, okay, all this, follow the Lord. He said, I've done that all. And the Lord says, okay, one thing you need to do, sell all that you have and give it away. Aren't you glad the Lord did not tell you that? <laughs> because it's hard, isn't it? To be able to, to come to that place and to do and to make that decision. So knowing the truth of God's word. I came from a journey where at a start it was dealing with drug rehabilitation. Guys who were smoking, chasing, jabbing, and they were taking drugs for a pretty long time. In the 70s, that was a very big issue. 
So the Lord have a sense of humor. Okay, as these guys come in, they grow, they grow. Yeah, they grow like uh, Stefan and yeah, your son. They can become that size. But while I still remain this size, and it's a good specimen because people will feel, oh, this is really a thorough guy like this one. Yeah. But we thank God that by the grace of God, lives will change and transform. Because many were giving up hope. How can a drug dependent be, be changed? The life can be changed. They are hopeless cases. But today, we can, we can line up and we can put, we can easily fill up this place with guys who have been set free from drugs. Hallelujah. And this is in Malaysia. In Malaysia. They have a voice. They have a combined voice to be able to say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So the Lord can set captives free. What is your issue? The Lord has given also, I mean, a sense of humor. He, 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 let, he put me into this drug rehabilitation work. And then after that, I moved on to prison ministry going in and out. Pastor Henry says, yeah, I can go in and out of the prison bus because of my size. So prison, when I pass through Pudu prison, say, how nice if I can go into the prison. Now prison, Pudu prison is gone already, okay. But Pudu prison, prison ministry. And so the Lord put me through this rehabilitation ministry, prison ministry, then only he put me in church ministry. And so, which is more difficult? Huh? <laughs> Dealing with people who think they are righteous, who think they know it all. But these guys, they know they are sinners and they need to be saved by faith. How many sinners here? Let me see your hand. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a good auto call. Eh? <laughs> no wonder Jesus sat with the tax collectors and the sinners. He was at ease with them. And these people can chat with him. And so the church has a challenge. How do we see people outside, the outcasts, people in, in the marginalized not acceptable by society, hard to fit in. And God's heart is for them as well. So now we are to lead a life to be led by the Spirit of God, to come to the place and we thank God for all of you, members and believers, leaders of various ministries, children's ministry, youth ministry, senior citizens ministry. You have given your time, you have given your attention to be able to bring these ones into that place so that they will feel loved and accepted, not rejected. Because rejection is a big issue for everyone. And God wants us to be liberated so that we are no longer rejected, but knowing that we are accepted in the beloved Christ. So you are unique. God has brought you by His grace. He filled you with the Holy Spirit. He writes His Word upon the tablet of your heart. You, at the very beginning when the Lord began the Sermon on the Mount, He says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You have a mission to help to reconcile people with broken relationships. Whether between siblings, there's such a, a word called sibling rivalry. There's such a, a thing called yeah, generation gap. And parents and children... Once upon a time, the children are small and young. Yeah, they will follow dad and mom wherever they will take them. But as they grow, as they grow, they find and discover themselves. And they are no longer following what would be the desires of the parents. And so it is not an easy place to be at. When there are contentions, when there are disagreements, when there are different preferences... There was a time when it came when I saw, because my dad 
And my stepmom, my own mom already passed away when she was pretty young. I was very young. My mom died when she was 39. I have my stepmother. I knew my stepmom more than I knew my mother. And so there was a time about eight years, ten years dead, and my stepmom, they were not talking with each other. They had an issue between both of them. So one day we said, okay, I think we, it's time we got to sit them down together and make peace. And so we had that on that day, sat down together with a few siblings, and we talked and said, Dad, are ye okay? It's been so long already, you're having this contention. Why not make peace? Okay, so my dad just got up and, uh, from his chair, and he came to my stepmom, and he... <laughs> Just shook her hand, okay, okay. Because probably he has not touched her for a long time already. This is the first touch after a long time, okay. And that made peace. And after that, dad and stepmom, when they walked, they would be holding hands and walking. He bought her a new pair of shoes, sh shining, yeah. Wow, and I thought, wow, it is peace at last. And good thing we did that because shortly after that, uh, between two years, stepmom passed away. So there are things, beloved, be a peacemaker. Sometimes we tell the old people, uh, it's like you are carrying all these offenses to the grave. And many do so. So do not carry offenses and hurts until your deathbed, until your deathbed and the grave. But settle it. Be reconciled. Make peace because then you feel so much more comfortable because when you are not at peace, you, are, you have the high tension wires within you, easily irritable, upset very quickly. You lose your temper. You, you throw tantrums. You use words that are unkind. And this is not talking about people that are outside. It's within the church as well. So may the Lord help us Okay, not just coming to church, hello, praise the Lord, how are you? Praise the Lord. Go back. The moment sometimes I remember the times when, when we were not on talking terms. One day, two days, we say we are like submarines. We will just go down, okay, under the water. Nobody can see, nothing, no, what happened, okay. We go down, submarine. And I can tahan for one day, two days, three days, four days. And when it comes to weekend, hey, weekend coming, you got to go to church. I must get myself right. right? <laughs> I must make peace, okay? Okay, so we hold hands and pray and cry, okay? I'll come back to the Lord and settle it. So that was our past challenges in marriage. How many have an easy marriage here? We want to learn from you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so if, if we are in a marriage have issues settle it otherwise it's transferred down to our children and children's children it becomes a vicious cycle until we break that cycle and we jump up into a new cycle a spiritual cycle a, a blessed cycle that will produce fruitfulness joyfulness peacefulness, truthfulness, blessedness. This is what the Lord wants to give you because you are His beloved children. He wants you to be more than conquerors. He wants you to rise above your circumstances so that people will see, hey, there's something special about you. Like, what is it, man? Able to persevere, having patience, having a shine over your face and being a giver. Because God has given to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as children of God, <clears throat> sons and daughters of the living God, you have the authority of Christ. It is the exousia over all the powers of the enemy. So do not allow the enemy to put you under subjection and under fear, under his control, but you break out of all of this and know that you are a child of God. You have authority. Authority is something when you put on that uniform, you put on the cap as a policeman, 
policeman may be a small size, but the moment he put out the hand, the big truck can stop, needs to stop because he has authority. So you, and for those who are small size, don't look down upon your size. You are powerful. You are dynamic. Amen? Because you have the Word of God. You have the Spirit of the Lord in your heart, in your spirit, and you have the authority that the Lord has given you. God says, I have given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So be strong, be bold, be courageous, and arise. You have been set apart unto God to fulfill His plan and purpose. That's why you are unique. God calls you, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. And we need rest because we need to pace ourselves for a long distance journey, a marathon journey. Don't sprint and, and find yourself out of stamina pretty soon. But some of you are tuned like that because you want to get things done and it's good but to know that you have been set apart unto God to fulfill His plan and purpose. And the Lord says, or Paul says in Corinthians, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What is it that we have found ourselves compromising with? Are there things that have been compromised? Is our system compromised? Our thoughts? Our uh, commitments? Because if the enemy, what the enemy wants is just a foothold. Just a small gap, he puts his foot in and he has a foothold. And in due time, the foothold travels, travels, and it becomes a stronghold over the mind. So sometimes we could be toying with sin, we could be playing with fire. We could get ourselves into uh, ungodly relationships. We could be compromising our value system. And so when we have done that, we have lost our bonus and our authority to make our stand. Because the enemy will say, Hey, see, I know what you have done. You have done this, you have done that. So to come clean, we come to the Lord. Lord, forgive me, Lord. Deliver me from this circumstances. Deliver me from my carnal nature, from my lustfulness. Deliver me from things that are unclean so that I can come to a place and be set apart unto you. I'll be coming to a close. Disciplines of the Father. Just now your pastor have, have mentioned that at the beginning. Sometimes God disciplines us. Whom I love, I discipline. So if you are going through pain, you are going through brokenness, you are going through a time whereby seemingly God is at a distance, you are questioning God, how come you are far from me? Because maybe we have allowed our system to be compromised and we are not hearing the still small voice. We are disturbed by so many other voices, distracted. And that has affected our relationship with the Lord. God wants to discipline us. We get back on track with regard to our prayer, fastings, services, keeping ourselves in healthy disciplines because the Lord loves us. Sons and daughters, you are heirs. The psalmist says, the Lord is my portion. My flesh and my heart fails, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So for those who are seniors, sometimes you look upon your body, your flesh, your, your organs, some may be failing. And if the Lord does not heal, the grace of God still sustains us. The faith that He has placed within you. It is not easy when we visit people in the hospitals and all the bad reports, not nice to hear, just right before you. So the psalmist says, yeah. 
this may fail, but you are my hope and my portion forever. To know that this body of flesh, it will fail, it will be gone, it, can, it would return back to the dust, but there is that day, the day of the resurrection, the day of the return when we shall all be changed. Hallelujah. Are you looking forward to that? We shall all be changed. Uh, sometimes we look, and I tell people, I look at the mirror, I don't like what I see because I see all my bones and it's only flesh, skin and bones. Some of you, we, we are opposites, you know. I'm opposite of this race. Bokawa, not enough. I'm underweight. The other side of those, hey, I have too much already, too much for me. So we are on opposite side of the scale. But it's okay. God loves us. Sometimes I tell my wife, she said, oh, I'm getting putting on. I say, I love every pound, every kilo of that. <laughs> because if she like me, then we'll be well, knocking with each other all the more. Yeah. So sometimes you see couples, uh, they are opposites of each other. A very tall one and a very short one. A very slim one and a very big one. But God makes all of us unique and special. He loves us. Do not put yourself down. Do not let others use words. You know, as we grow, as we mature, we do not allow these little foxes to ruin the vineyard. Little, little things, uh, body language and words, it can hurt. If you are still so easily hurt, you need to grow some more. Be thick skin. In that sense, you do not allow this to hurt you and to cause you to Stay away from healthy relationships. And everybody say, Amen. So as children of the resurrection, the Word of God says, we, you, you will become like Christ when He returns and we will be glorious beings. We will come to that place. We don't know how much changes it would be. We can still recognize each other, but we will look wonderful. Amen. Like your pastor. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, in my early years, ah, uh, whether it's weekly, we will hear David Ramaya, Joe Ramaya. I will, we will hear this. They will come back with stories. Good thing I don't have a good memory. I don't remember what stories they were telling. <laughs> uh, but when we came, we were in the center because there were other students. Yeah, they came back from Bible school. They'll be telling Bible school stories. Yeah. And praise the Lord. God has sustained you, Pastor David through the years, even though you had a heart, need some help, okay. Uh, but God has given you grace upon grace. So His awesome grace, and we declare His awesome grace upon all of you because you are His beloved. You are His chosen ones. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation, a people belonging to Him. Hallelujah. And He has got a great plan for you, a future and if you invest your life and your time in serving Him, uh, I'm, this, this will be, yeah, we have served the Lord for these decades and we thank God that He has always been faithful. And sometimes we hear nowadays very hard to get full-time workers. We pray that it will not be like this here. But you will be willing to give yourself into full-time service. Don't just say, I choose to be a tent maker. Yeah, but be able to serve the Lord. Because it is a privilege to serve Him. And we thank God that He has blessed us, uh, our children, our children's children through the many decades. And God is good. And everybody say, Amen, Amen. amen. Shall we arise together as I just pray with you? <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, our loving Father, we thank you for every son, every daughter here this morning and those who are online, dear Lord, wherever they are in their homes, in their travels. Lord, we declare, may your blessings rest upon them and their household and all that they represent, dear God, that the enemy will have no opportunity to cause conflicts or confusion. But these ones, Lord, will know that they are a people belonging to you. They are a masterpiece, Lord. The workmanship of God 
crafted by your hands, fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord, this morning, may your multiple graces, graves upon graves, rest upon thy people, Lord, as they hear, as they receive, as they wait upon you, as they call upon you, Lord. They will know you are the God who sees, you are the God who hears, and you are the God who comes down to their time of need. And no challenges are impossible for them to overcome. But Lord, you will grant them victory upon victory. So Lord, bless your people this day and the days to come. Whatever news we may hear, we thank God, Lord, for you have said, the world in the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So Lord, here we are, standing upon your word, upon your promises. May your people be blessed abundantly, richly, amazingly, awesomely, dear Lord, as you continue to lead and to guide for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, not the spirit of bondage, not the spirit of fear, not the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of love and power and a soul by. So we receive from you, Lord. We receive from you this day and we give you praise. We give you thanks in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen, amen.